Okay, I'm going to do a review. Uh, this is my first review I've ever done, by the way. Uh, never done one before for any other product to put on the internet, but I kind of felt compelled to uh, after my recent search for a new backpack, a hunting backpack that would carry a bow. Uh, after doing a lot of research out there, looking at both websites, uh, looking at the videos made by the manufacturers and then other reviews by uh, home amateurs like myself, none of them really covered a backpack in its full entirety. Um, so I thought I would do one because I finally narrowed my search and made a purchase and I went with the uh, Vanguard backpack. The model is the Pioneer 1600. I originally ordered two of the 2100s but they were too big so I shipped them back and I ordered a single 1600. We like it so I've ordered a second one and it should be here this week. Uh, what got me started on the search for a new backpack? Well, let me start off by saying this is what we were using, my daughter and I. I've got a 16-year-old daughter, and she hunts with me. Uh, and this is the current uh, Vanguard Pioneer 1600. So you see the size difference. Uh, so the 2100 was quite a bit bigger, and we just don't go camping and backpacking and hiking, going up into the mountains needing that much gear. So uh, that size was not required for us. This backpack I got for work. I've got a red one just like it, so she's been using the blue, I've been using the red. Down here in South Texas, when we go deer hunting, uh, we typically load these things up here at the house. Uh, we drive to the stand, or pretty close to the stand. We're hunting in box blinds on the ranch that I hunt. Sometimes I guide for them, uh, and take out a paying client. So I can pack everything in here I need for an afternoon or a morning hunt. We're never out all day. Uh, I can put water in here, it's got plenty of compartments. I uh, can carry uh, a laptop in here, a Surface, whatever I need, uh, all the stuff. I need cameras, binoculars, range finders, grunt calls, extra clothes, that kind of thing. One of the things I really loved about this and why I got it for work and it's carried over for uh, hunting is it's got this compartment that's padded on both sides for a laptop. Now this laptop that I'm going to use here is an old laptop. We don't even use it anymore. I probably need to throw it away. But it's big, it's thick, it's cumbersome. This side here is uh, kind of tacky. It's got kind of uh, not really a non-stick. I don't know what you call it, but it's kind of got a grip to it. Uh, but it fits in this backpack really well. And you zip it up. And I have traveled for my job and done PowerPoint presentations in front of crowds. And this backpack holds everything I need. I can throw it over one shoulder when I'm going to the airport. It's nice and clean. I use my elbow to tuck it in and keep it out of the way, especially when I'm going down the aisle of the airplane. I'm not hitting anybody in the head with it. If I get to my seat, I can get stuff out real quick, open up the overhead storage, and I stick it in. So it's worked really well for us. Uh, we started using it for deer hunting a while back. And again, it's been very uh, uh, good for us for that as well. I mean, who doesn't carry a, a backpack or a Surface, a tablet, something with them when they go hunting now? Because everybody's checking trail cameras. Uh, for those people that blog, I'm, I'm not really sure what that means, but the bloggers that go hunting uh, and stuff, they have to keep their viewers up to date, I guess. Um, checking Wi-Fi. If I'm going to the ranch for a while, for a few days, I'll take my backpack. I can still watch movies on it. Um, you know, check email, that kind of thing. So almost everybody's carrying some type of electronic device with them, whether it's in Texas or Wyoming or Alaska. They carry stuff, right? So this backpack has served us well. We recently went on a trip up to Alaska uh, to hunt black bear. Uh, she took the blue one, I took the red one. Uh, on the plane, I had it loaded down with our cameras and stuff, our valuables that we didn't get stolen over, our luggage. And again, we could travel in the airport, airports quick and efficiently with it. We got out there, and the cabin we stayed at uh, and where we hunted was about a two to three mile uh, difference, depending on where we were going. But we got to the hunting area by ATVs, by four wheelers. And so I would have more clothes on. It was cold. It was cold that week, and it rained almost the whole week. Uh, so I would throw this over my shoulders. Uh, I was hunting with my Bowtech RPM 360. Uh, and it's kind of a cumbersome bow. It's got split limbs. It's thicker. The axle's real wide. It's got that big cam on it. And I had a uh, bow sling for it that fit over the cams. Uh, my daughter was shooting her uh, Bowtech Eva Shockey. It's a little smaller. 
uh, so hers carried a lot better. But I was riding that forward with this over my back and then my bow on top of that. Half the time it was cutting across my neck. I couldn't get to ride right. I'm right over bouncy ground. Uh, like I said, it was cold. It was freezing a couple of times. A couple of days it was really at freezing temperatures. And my bow kept hitting that metal rack on the back of the four-wheeler. So I was trying to sit like this to keep my, my bow from doing that. It was very uncomfortable. And I was panic mode the whole time about destroying my bow. Uh, it rained, like I said, the whole time we were there. We were hunting out of ground blinds that didn't have a bottom in them, so the ground was muddy and wet. There were times it rained so hard that we literally had like an inch or two of water coming into the blind, or I say an inch, probably three quarters of an inch of water coming through the blind. So these were sitting in the water, stuff in the bags were getting wet. Uh, so when I got back, I said, okay, let me find a bag to replace these more waterproof uh, that carries a bow somehow to keep it protected. Uh, which led us to this, this backpack. Again, you see the size difference and the quality of material. I didn't need camouflage. Uh, I'm not a big camouflage person when I'm out in public. Um, and I'm going to use this to travel. We're going to Africa next summer. I didn't want to be camouflaged. I want to try to blend in with the general public when I'm out there and not draw attention to ourselves. The, the animals can't tell the difference anyway between olive drab and, and camouflage. Uh, if personally if they'd have had this in gray or black, I would have bought gray probably, probably then black, and then third would be olive drab. Uh, but they didn't. They have Vanguard sells it in camouflage and in in uh, olive drab, and I chose that. So the 1600 Pioneer, and here's the features to it. Let me just break it down. The exterior here, as you see, it's got these butterflies, as they call them, that open up. I'm going to go into more depth than that here in a minute. On the exterior of these, it's got these cords here where you can put stuff like a, that you want to get to quickly, maybe a raincoat, uh, a thicker shirt, a flannel shirt, or something like that. And you can stuff that in there and tighten it down while you're packing. The temperature changes, it starts raining, you can pull that out really easy, I'm assuming. Again, we don't hunt in the mountains, uh, so a lot of this stuff that's on here is new for me. Okay, I've never had these features before, so I'm assuming that's what those are for. As you open these up, you see they got the net pockets. I'm not a big proponent of the net, the mesh. Uh, we have a lot of thorns, a lot of grass burrs in South Texas. Uh, those could get torn up, but you have the pockets there. You got this strap here that's adjustable. I've seen in one of the other videos where they'll put like a hind quarter. Uh, we don't do that down here typically. We just throw it in the back of the truck, but if you had to pack an animal out, you would do that, put it in here and strap it in. You got this strap here that's obviously for the barrel of your rifle where you mount it vertically. It's got this little pouch that comes out of the bottom, and you would put the butt stock in there or the bow, like I'm going to demonstrate here in a minute. I'll go into that a little bit more. Close this back up and continue on. Like I said, I'll circle back to this in a minute. Over here, it's got these that come undone. I wasn't really sure what these were for, don't have a clue. Finally, kind of figured out that if you had uh, a tripod for your camera, for your binoculars, your spotting scope, uh, maybe for your rifle, shooting sticks, you would slide those in here and then come around here and catch those. There's one on both sides to hold those on, I'm assuming. Uh, the bottom of the backpack has rubber coating, a rubber bottom. I like that. Hopefully it's more waterproof than the other, but I don't know that. Inside of here is an orange shell that comes out that covers the whole backpack. It looks like a big orange egg. I don't personally like the orange. I would prefer to have olive drab, again, black or gray. Uh, but uh, I like to have the option, but you don't. That's what it is. It's got two straps here. Uh, I called Vanguard the other day, asked the lady what these are for. She didn't know. She put me in a hold a couple minutes. She came back on. Nobody really knew. But you can use them for whatever you want to, she said. So I'm like, cool. I just don't know what I would use them for. Uh, maybe somebody out there that's watching this is a backpacker, knows what these are for. The ones on the 2100 were bigger. She said you could put a bedroll through there, maybe a, a, a sleeping pad. Uh, I don't know how you'd get one through there. Uh, I'm six foot tall. I don't think I could roll up a bed pad that, you know, a sleeping pad that would fit in there. But I don't know if I can't find a use for them, I may cut them off. I think they would just grab stuff. But they're there for some reason. Uh, on this side of the backpack, you've got another pocket. You open it up. It's got two mesh again. I'm not a big fan of that, but it's okay. Holds a lot of stuff in there. On this side over here, 
opens up. It's got this reflective material in here that uh, would keep stuff cool. I like that. The problem with it is it could be a problem. It's very crinkly, very crinkly. Uh, but it's nice. I carry water bottles, so that would work for me. Again, another mesh thing over here. The main compartment got these big bright orange pull tabs. It doesn't zip all the way down. It goes about a third of the way down on both sides. It's a deep, deep chamber. Inside, it's got a bag here that is for a bladder, a water bladder. Uh, Vanguard doesn't sell it with a water bladder. Other companies do. If I needed a water bladder, I would buy one, but I don't. This is where the computer holder comes in. Again, this is a big, bulky computer, and it's sticky, uh, but it will fit in this bag. And slide in there. In the 2100 it went in really easy because it's a wider bag. Uh, so it would hold this big heavy computer. Uh, you know a lot of the Mac computers are thinner. Most computers nowadays are thinner. They don't have that sticky surface, surface on the top so that will suit my needs and put a backpack, I mean a, a computer in there so I can still transport it. When we go to Africa I can slide it in there, put my cameras in there so that's good. Still works for me. It's got this one up here that's supposed to be waterproof, not very big at all, uh, but you can put, you know, wallet, money, cash, keys, whatever in there. There's another one right here. Again, not, not very wide, but it's fairly deep, you know. That's how deep that pocket is, but it's not real wide to get stuff down in there. So kind of, kind of weird on those two storage how they're deep, but you can't really open it up. So that's the storage on it. As I flip it here, I see this blue marker here remind me that if you put the bladder in, that's where the drinking hose would come out and you can hang it to the left or to the right. Uh, it's got a nice, sturdy, rugged carry strap right here. It's also got one on this side right here that I like so you can carry it horizontally. A lot of backpacks don't have that, so I like that. Again, nice and sturdy. The shoulder straps. I like. They're comfortable. They're webbed like that. They're heavy cushioned. Uh, they're very comfortable. They got the sternum strap that slides up and down to adjust for each person. Uh, they got this webbing here that's adjustable to help strengthen it. I'll kind of demonstrate this in a minute. They got these two D-rings here. At first I wasn't sure what those for. I guess you could clip like a, a GPS, a compass something to them real quickly. Uh, I could see them being used for a um, pair of binoculars, a, a harness mount. I've got the shoulder uh, style I typically wear so they hang and don't wear on your neck. But if you're wearing this backpack, it might be difficult to do that. So you just clip the binoculars here and let them hang, I'm thinking. Uh, it has the waist belt. I didn't want a backpack with a waist belt. But I couldn't find a backpack for sale that carried the bow that didn't have the waist belt. I've learned to accept it, and I'll show you why, and I actually I'm glad it has the waist belt for when I do need it. When I travel, like I said, I'm typically carrying this to the airport over one shoulder. And uh, as I'm going through there, I don't need this hitting somebody in the head or getting caught in the way, you know, so I wanted it out of the way. Well, I've experimented with this and realized it's not that big a deal. I can take this, if I can do this correctly here for the demo mode, and you just fold this out of the way. I don't take too much time trying to do this, but you can cover these back over on top of each other to tighten it down. Again, I'm not going to go to the whole trouble of doing it for the video. You'll get the point. But you cinch these down like that and it keeps it tight and you can go tighter and now that I can throw it over my shoulder I can even put it over both shoulders and it's not that uncomfortable over you know, don't really notice it now if it was fully loaded and I was up in the mountains I'm sure I'd notice it but for me to get from my car at the airport through check-in and get on the airplane go down the aisle not hit anybody in the head still got it tucked over open the overhead and throw it up in there it's it's okay it's great uh, if you're going to do this as a check-in you don't have to worry about these getting caught on the carousel or anything. So that's one way of doing it, and I can live with that. Now these also come with webbing holes here for mounting things. They came, it came with these two uh, pouches. 
that just snap on. Uh, snap on here really easy and quickly. Uh, they're padded. They're perfect size for a rangefinder, a camcorder, another camera, a cell phone, money, whatever. My daughter's going to use them for snacks. That's what she says they are. They're her snack pouches. You'll fill them up with snack food. Uh, I wouldn't travel with these to the airport. Again, they're in the way. I will carry them as check-on. I mean, I mean, put them in the bag or my check-on luggage. And then when I get to where I'm actually hunting, out in the field or whatever, then I would probably put them back on. And if you don't want to use them both, you know, you could put a holster here, a knife or whatever, strap it on there. So you've got weapons readily available to you for self-defense or protection or whatever. So very handy. One of the cool features that, again, I'm not a backpacker, so I don't know all the features of backpacks. And maybe this is a common feature that everybody else watching this knows. Um, but this backpack is built with a ventilation system like a lot of them are. It's got two aluminum rods that go down in the other structure that will keep it off your back for ventilation. That's very common now. What I didn't realize until I started looking at this thing up close is there's a Velcro strap here and it's got a XL and an L and an M and an S on it. Didn't know what that was for. I looked in the book that came with it. Uh, yet again, Vanguard's video didn't explain that. And you adjust that if you'll watch these straps here, it pulls them, you know, makes it shorter, makes it right up higher on your back. So my daughter actually likes it at the medium length. Uh, so I'll pull that back out just a little bit. And you Velcro that back down in there. And now that when you put it on, it sits higher on your shoulders and up off of you. So the backpack is customizable basically for any body size. Petite, tall, short, whatever. Uh, female, youth, it will work and adjust for your body style and to ride higher up on your shoulders. A great feature that nobody talked about. Okay, why did I really want to get this thing to carry my bow? So I'm going to open this thing up and show you how it's meant to be used and my pros and cons of it. I want to take this big O360. Again, it's wide, split limb with a wide axle and a big fat cam. I'm going to stick it in here. Now I'm going to go with the bottom of my bow in first and my sight down. You do it however you want. This is how I've seen it go best. Put my cam in first. It's got this buckle strap here that comes across. It catches your cam in there to help hold it in place into that sock. Then I'm going to take my stabilizer. I'm going to go underneath this opening in my butterfly. Reposition it. And I'm going to come across my strings here. And again, if you have a quiver, uh, I don't have it on here. You can put your air on your quivers on here still. And these are adjustable enough to catch everything. So just to show you, I'm not done yet. It's being held in by the boot. And this is all adjustable, and this set here holds it in. Now that I'm going to close up this butterfly, and again, it's adjustable enough that if you had your quiver on here, it would go across the quiver and hold it all snug. Now remember, my backpack is empty. There's nothing in there at all, so it's loose. I don't have it strapped down. But this is what it would look like and how they intended it for the Vanguard to be worn. Your bow is vertical, out of the way, nice and clean. The problem for me in my trip to Alaska was even with it like this, if I go to sit down on a four-wheeler, this is still lower than my rear end on the seat. It's still going to be bumping up against that back rack. And that back rack is made out of steel. My cams are aluminum. The steel will win every time. There's no way aluminum is going to beat steel in that battle. So, while it's great for carrying, and great as a backpack like that, if you're going to ride on a four-wheeler, you can have issues with it. Now, two things you could do about that. Vanguard only sells this cloth bag. There are two other backpack manufacturers out there, and I will probably end up buying one of them, because they sell them on eBay for about 20 bucks. The boot itself, and we'll take this back off. 
set it up here. They sell, and this has got snaps on it right here, so you can snap that off if you don't need it. They sell one that looks like a soft cast for an elbow, and they're camouflage, and they're about twenty dollars. But it's thicker here; it comes down to probably about that long, so it would cover most of your uh, lower set of limbs and your cam. It's hard plastic that's covered in a softer material and it's got a clamshell so it slips on there. So that way you would have that hard plastic covering that aluminum cam so if you did make contact with something hard it's going to protect that cam a lot better than this soft cloth. So that's something Vanguard I think could improve upon by doing themselves and making one of those. But I can buy it offline uh, and, and attach it as an extra. So that's one of the things I wish they would change on this. I wish the orange were had an option for a different color. Um, I wish they didn't have the netting so much, but it's okay. It's still enough that uh, I wanted to buy it. I didn't have to say no to it. I still like the backpack. But my big concern now is still what? My cam's still hitting. Even if I got the clamshell, it's still hitting. There's another manufacturer out there of backpacks that makes one that goes horizontally across the bow. I called Vanguard and asked them if they can make that modification. They said no, but they would pass it on to product engineering or whatever they called it for a future modification, maybe sort of kind of hoping kind of thing, wink, wink. So I said, okay, you know, I was in the Corps and the Marines, we have a saying, you know, adapt and overcome. We did for so little, it was so little for so long, we just learned to do without. Uh, so I started researching and trying to figure out how I can make a, a strap system on here to hold the bow horizontally. I went on eBay and found a guy, and I'll post his information in the video here for you to see, that makes things out of the webbing, different colors. And he made it out of olive drab for me. I emailed him, gave him what I wanted. I sent him a picture of what I was looking at. Within an hour, he sent me back a picture of this and said, will this work? And I said, it looks like it worked perfectly. So for $10.79, free shipping, no tax, he had a set of these that was $10, bucks, ten seventy nine, for the complete set for two of them, shipped to my house. I got them in three days. So how do these work? I'm going to turn it this way so I can actually kind of see what I'm doing. Let me turn it this way. You want these to hang off the inside of your strap. So, and there's already a strap built in here to keep them vertical. So I'm going to come out or inside and come outside and back in. And clip that. Okay. Take the same way here. Well, one of them's a slider, and the other two are sewn on. So the two that are sewn on stay at the top. So I'm going to go from the inside this way. So it's going to look like this. My shoulder straps coming in. And we'll lay my bow bag down. Take my bow, flip it over so the risers at the top, and again. Backpack's not loaded. This is empty. It would fit better and ride better if I had it loaded. I'm going to set it in here like so, so it doesn't fall off the table. If what I have found so far is I go to the furthest point out I can on my riser. That keeps these buckles away from my equipment on the bow. Specifically my sight and the sight pins. So I'll do those two. Now it holds it up like that. Now I want to undo this one. And I'm going to come across. And if I loosen this up enough, I could probably catch all of this. Now then, that keeps it from flipping outward. And it keeps it up and down. And we'll try to center this and put it on my shoulders. Again, it would help if the backpack were loaded. I'm try not to hit anything behind me. I just did. So now then, my kid teaches me that I look like I'm about to go flying, like I'm a bat wing. But now my bow is horizontal, 
And there's no way when I sit down on a four-wheeler that's going to connect anything. So if I can again turn without hitting, this suits my needs. Now my bow uh, will fit either horizontally or vertically on my backpack, and it costs me an extra ten dollars and seventy-nine cents to do it. And again, you can modify it however you want to. It comes off pretty quick. Now again. I've never elk cut in my life. I've watched a lot of videos on it, and it certainly does not make me an expert. But I would imagine for the people that are traipsing through the mountains up there calling and bugling, you would not carry it like that. Okay, You would still either carry it by hand over one of those other sling types. This is primarily for carrying it on, a, on an ATV, you know, that kind of deal, uh, not out hunting through the woods when you've got to get it off in a hurry. Okay, so that's not what I'm saying. The other thing I would like about this, and again, if this were loaded, it would be full. It would be like a big cushion, right? Like a big, big seat cushion. I could take it back and put it in the vertical position again, like I showed you first. And then if I wanted to, I could strap this on a rack of a four-wheeler, a UTV, or whatever, set it in the bed of the truck. And now that it's up off the metal, and it's, and it's not going anywhere, and again, my cams are protected. So, uh, all in all, uh, I really like this backpack. Uh, again, for the price, it's a great buy. For the extra $10.79 to get these extra straps. Again, you saw how easy they went on. I wouldn't travel with them on there. Uh, I carry them separate as well so they don't get lost or broken. Uh, they come off and you're good to go. Now I've got the backpack that I really wanted for a great price. Uh, so I hope this video helped. I uh, hope to explain this uh, particular backpack and why I chose it. And uh, thank you for watching.